Okay, before we get started with the full workshop where we get our hands dirty writing SQL code, and, and I'll spend a lot of time uh, showing you how to do different things. Right now, I just want you to sit back for a second and just watch what I'm going to do. And I'm kind of calling this a proof case for SQL. Many of us aren't familiar with how powerful SQL can be, and our only framework for performing GIS work is using a GUI inside of GIS. So what I want to do is just create this fun little example uh, from the data set that we'll be using in our, in our training. And that is I want to find the residential properties in the Cascadilla Creek watershed that are at risk for flooding. They're, they're in the A zone. And I eventually want to sum up the land values for those properties. So inside of ArcGIS, I have the data set that we're going to be using for Tompkins County, New York. This is what I use in all of my training videos, and it's a great way for you to try to solve similar problems using different products. So let's open this up inside of SQL for Arc. So I'm going to click the add in, type open SQL, and up pops SQL for Arc. And if you open up this canister, you can see I have all of my layers. Now, without any further description, I'm just going to run this particular query. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting data from the parcels and the watersheds and the flood zones. So I'm doing a three table join and I'm doing it where the, the, the parcels intersect the watersheds and the watershed is Cascadilla Creek and also where the parcels intersect the flood zone and the flood zone is the A zone and the property class is residential, and this returns the properties that I get from that query. So you realize there's a lot going on here. Now that's all the answer I really wanted, but if I, I wanted to go further, I'm gonna put this back into the ESRI Geo database. So let me run this. And this will take a few seconds because it's using the SDK to speak or to talk with the Geo database. So we'll let this run for just a moment. That's done. So let's come back into ArcGIS and let's open up our folder. And I'll refresh our geo database and pull in the Cascadilla Creek data and you can see right here where those particular properties are that were selected. So these are the ones that met that particular criteria and they're intersecting. Now maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe instead I just want to get the sum of all the property values. So I can then just type select sum ASMT, call that as total ASMT from, and then let's just wrap this query together. And we'll let this run. And again, it will just take a few seconds because we're doing a three table join with two geometric intersections. So there's a good bit of work going on. That's completed and that's the total assessment of those properties. Let's do one other thing. Let's also select prop class and I'm going to get rid of this prop class. Let's get all the different prop classes and then I'm going to say group by prop class. So what I'm doing here, I've got to also add the prop class here. There we go. Now what I'm doing here is I'm summing up all the assessments that came from this first query. I'm going to call that total assessment and I'm grabbing the property classifications, but I'm saying sum each of the assessments up based on their property classification. So that's done. So now you can see the different values for agriculture, commercial, residential, community service, and vacant property. Now that's very English-like. When we read this, it almost reads like a book. I want to select the sum of the assessment as total assessment and the prop class from 
and I want to get the distinct records of the shape, assessment, watershed, zone, and property class from the parcels UTM, the watersheds UTM, the flood zones UTM, where there's an intersection between the parcels and the watersheds, and the watershed is equal to Cascadilla Creek, and there's an intersection between the parcels and the flood zones, and the flood zone is equal to A, and I want to group all that by the property class. All right, so let's think about how we might do this in a traditional GIS approach. Well, the first thing we have to do is select by attribute. So let's select the parcels into a new selection where the prop class is equal to residential. So the nice little interface. So we've got those. So those are all our residential properties. Now let's do another select by attribute and I have to select the watersheds where the name or the watershed is equal to Cascadilla Creek. Apply that. Turn the parcels off. You can see Cascadilla Creek there. Then another select by attribute and this one's going to be the flood zones where the zone is equal to A. Okay, so I've got those done. So now we're going to do select by location. So I want to select the parcels that intersect the flood zones, zero meters, and in this case I want to add, I want to select a subset from the current selection. That's done. And you can see those that have gotten selected. So you get the idea, and then from there we can use the summarize command. And then we can summarize the attributes for the for the parcels, right? So we get the input layer, the parcels, and we can summarize certain fields. So I'm not going to go through that, but you just get the idea of the number of times we have to issue uh, different GUIs in the wizards to have this task get completed. So if we went a little further, we would trim things down even more as opposed to writing something that is very English-like in our command structure with SQL for ArcGIS Pro. And again, if we have the cores on our computer, we're going to be able to use them. Now, this is one approach. There are so many different ways to write SQL. So over the next bunch of hours, we're going to spend time learning how to write different queries in SQL for Arc and also update uh, geo databases, so you can see how this is really not something that works uh, separate from ArcGIS Pro, but instead can work in conjunction with it to really help us in the in the process that we may be going through. So that's a good start uh, to get us going. So hopefully you've seen this and said, "Gee, I really want to learn more about this because I think that there's um, a lot of benefit that I can get by learning to apply SQL queries 